The sudden death of a main character in the middle of a story usually qualifies as a twist in Western stories, or the ten in Japanese stories. The ten in Kisho Tenketsu serves as a major change in the plot, usually a complication in the hero's journey. Kazuya's death in episode 25 certainly feels like that, but from what we learned in the previous episodes and the reactions from Kazuya's loved ones, his death fits better under Sho, a simple development leading towards the true complication. Which isn't to say that Kazuya's death doesn't cause major changes, it just doesn't happen to the plot. The path to Minami's dreams, the driving force behind the show's first act, doesn't change course, and actually becomes much clearer after Kazuya dies. As sudden and tragic as Kazuya's death is to Minami, Tatsuya, and the rest of the town, his departure ultimately adds no meaning to the story. No one says the word dying, or any variation of death, throughout episode 25. Hardly anyone says anything at all, really. Tatsuya has a conversation with his parents, members of the baseball team share some concerns about Kazuya's disappearance, and that's really it. For such an impactful moment in the series, episode 25 is basically a silent 22 minutes of an already quiet show. Instead of dialogue, the episode focuses on audio cues, signs, and symbols that point towards Kazuya's death. At the beginning of the episode, Tatsuya's mother hands him a protective charm to deliver to Kazuya, who's already left for the regional finals. But while in Tatsuya's breast pocket, the charm protects only Tatsuya from harm, and not Kazuya. Tatsuya's lonesome journey to find his brother even has its own soundtrack. The cicadas, train whistles, and crossing bells, barely audible in transition scenes when the show begins, now turn up to deafening levels as Tatsuya searches for Kazuya. These symbols don't support new ideas, however, but rather amplify ideas the show has already introduced. Tatsuya doesn't need a protection charm from his mother to survive his trip because we know from his flashbacks that he's already the more divinely blessed of the twins. The railroad crossings and street signs aren't new information either. They've been here the entire time, earlier just as a way to organize pedestrians and traffic, and now as a reminder of life lost too soon. If anything, the routine lights and sounds highlight the senselessness of Kazuya's death because the world operates much the same after his death as it did before. Kazuya dies off-screen to keep the show family-friendly, but we get some hints as to how he died. The street signs, railroad lights, train whistles, and car noises that appear throughout the arc all suggest a traffic accident. When Tatsuya passes the likely accident site, he hears a bystander say that a high schooler dressed in a baseball uniform hopped in front of a truck to save a child from being hit. We don't get any visual evidence of this happening, but we don't need it either, because the cause of death doesn't add any significance to the story. Touch doesn't use internal monologue at any point during the show, requiring the audience to pick up information from only action and dialogue. But the characters mostly stay still in episodes 26 and 27, quietly mourning Kazuya's passing, with the exception of Minami and Tatsuya simultaneously screaming in different locations under the cover of blaring music and a passing train. The Uesugi family probably knows the true cause of death, but they don't share it because to them, the only meaningful thing is that Kazuya dies. There is no important information beyond that. A story's 10 usually places an obstacle between the main characters and their goals, but Kazuya's death actually clears Minami and Tatsuya's path. Tatsuya still has the opportunity to fulfill his athletic potential, but now with the baseball team instead of the boxing club with the sudden absence of his brother. And now finally in the spotlight, he can show everyone that he's actually the more gifted of the two without having his brother's pride to protect. His rise as an ace pitcher also tackles Minami's dream of going to Koshian, and their after-school practices now allow them to spend the entire day together, though we already know from the beginning that Minami was going to end up with Tatsuya anyway. Practically, this just gives the audience more time to watch Minami and Tatsuya bicker and flirt with each other, both necessary elements of a good romantic comedy. In terms of an unexpected tragedy, Kazuya's death could fit under the plot's ten. But 10 usually inspires a fundamental change in the story, and because Kazuya's death doesn't alter the story's key, it fits better under Sho, a simple development that leads to the real conflict. 
Compare Kazuya's death in Touch to Honda's death in Major, a more recent baseball anime. We watch Honda get hit in the head, we watch him collapse at home, and we see his body in the hospital bed as he's dying. His son Goro cries, and so does everyone else. There's a lot of crying and shouting and blaming. It's a loud passing, and this is standard for an anime death scene, and far less impactful than how Touch handled Kazuya's death. While Major tries to impart meaning in Honda's death by reframing it as an obstacle for Goro to overcome, Touch frames Kazuya's death as nothing more than an accident. There's no meaning in Kazuya's death because death doesn't always have a greater message. Sometimes people just die. And this makes Kazuya's death more tragic and much more human than a lot of the deaths that haunt us in our favorite stories.